I like creating experiences for people, creative experiences that will bring people into a world. And as years went by, that kind of translated into video. YouTube changed our lives. Anybody can now do something. A lot of it is like the final product and what you're delivering to your client, but also like what did you go through to get to that, right? And how good that experience was. Honestly, I take on whatever comes on besides weddings. I don't, I just don't do weddings, but. Yeah. Hi guys, what is up? We are here today with Derek Sanchez from Inspired Films. Welcome to this episode. We're super excited to jump into it. But before we start, let's say hi from the other, the other host. Hey guys, thanks for joining. What's up guys? Welcome in. Fernanda from City Films, Val from Hazelnut Productions, me from Eman Films, and the famous Derek Sanchez, famous here in know, uh, you know, famous. local land <laughs> from Inspired Films. Thank you. Can, Thank can, you, can you tell us um, who you are and uh, why you are creative? Why am I creative? Oh wow. my gosh, that's a deep <laughs> I know. You made that. I was like, no, straight to it, bro. Straight to it. No, yeah. Well, like, actually, wait. Yeah. Before, because I, I do want to ask that question. Right, but go for it. Tell the audience what you do and what type of work you do. Sure, yeah, so like he said, I'm owner of Inspired Films here in the Orlando area. Uh, I do a lot of corporate work, some doc work, a um, little bit of brand films. I'm trying to get more into the doc space, mm -hmm. ideally, so, but honestly, I take on whatever comes on, besides weddings. I don't, I just don't do weddings, but. Yeah, I think we're on the same boat yeah. on that. <laughs> no weddings here. Yeah. But, um, do not, please, guys. I feel like every filmmaker, filmmaker, wedding, every good filmmaker has done at least one wedding, like yeah. at least here in the it's, area. It's so, like, part of initiation, it's man. It's part Ooh, of it, yeah. man. Like, it's, I, I think we gotta have a wedding filmmaker here once to like at least defend it. Well, every we other did, person we have is we like, had Romero. Romero. We had yeah, Romero, and he talked about weddings a, a lot of his stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, weddings, he yeah. does a lot of really, but his stuff is really good. He's an amazing. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's Romero is really good. So you've you've done that. You had to go. I've done one or two, and that was it. And I have a buddy who's my reference who only does weddings yeah and i'm like i give you all the props man exactly all it's, the people that come to me hey i got a wedding well i got a guy for you it's not yep. me so, so it's yeah. Somebody else. yeah yeah but you were saying the stuff that you focus on right now then you said you want to get more into because you said brand videos corporate work and then documentaries yeah when you say you want to do more documentaries what exactly do you mean um I don't know, just telling stories. So I'm part of the art of documentary mm -hmm. and just telling more stories in a creative way, kind of how they teach. So taking the principles that they teach in those courses and those lessons and actually applying it to my film work. So I haven't had something that I could look back on yet and be like, man, that was a really fun, creative, artistic piece of telling someone's story. Yeah. It's been more cut and dry of the corporate, corporate. you know, paying the bills. Yeah. Um, so I want to get more into that creative space where, where I have the freedom to shape the film from beginning to end. Yeah. yeah you got to start and, working with us more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's all we, what we love to do. We do a lot of that. Yeah. We, we do a lot of, not necessarily specifically corporate work, but we do a lot of brand stuff for a lot of corporate companies. Mm -hmm. So telling their stories or making a very nice commercial they can use on their website or yeah. stuff. We did a documentary recently that he's going to like. You were gonna talking about it last week. I think I mentioned it to you when yeah. we were working the other day. Which one was it? Uh, the one with Sam yeah, and Katarina. Katarina and Sam. Surfer. Oh yeah, you did say something. And then yeah. yeah, in his laugh afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll send that to you when when those because we're, we're cutting actually, up uh, reels from. We're like, probably gonna have a, a watch party, right? We can do that. Yeah. yeah. We can yeah. also send you the reels as they're getting done because that's gonna be done before the final piece. Yeah. yeah. So we can send those to you. Okay, yeah, let's thanks. rewind. Tell us how you started. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you started. Yeah. So um, I've always kind of back to what you were asking me. I've always kind of just been creative. That's just how I'm, I'm wired. When I was a teenager, I would do more like art, like kind of like sketches and simple art, nothing too crazy. But uh, then I got into ceramics, making things with clay, and I really enjoyed that. That was fun. And as a kid, uh, so I'm originally from New York, but been in Florida since 2003. And um, my dad, he's retired from American Airlines. And so we would fly to Florida all the time to go to Disney. And so we're like theme park nerds, like hardcore theme park uh, fans. And my dream growing up was always to work for Disney as an Imagineer. And so if you, whoever doesn't know, like an Imagineer are the people behind the attractions that create experiences in the theme parks. And so that kind of summarizes me growing up. Like that was my trajectory. Like I liked creating experiences for people, creative experiences that will bring people into a world. And as years went by, that kind of translated into video. And I've always liked movies and stuff like that. And then at the early years of YouTube, me and my buddy, he was into parkour. I was like, we were into cosplay. We got a 
I don't even know, some cheap little camcorder, and we kind of just started going for it. Mm -hmm. And from then, as YouTube developed and there was, uh, you know, people doing their own tutorials, I just started learning from other filmmakers. And me and my buddy, we got a camcorder and we we're just doing dumb videos on YouTube. Give him trying to learn and do parkour, me doing like cosplay stuff and just messing around. And then over time, I've just continued to kind of work on that skill and just self-taught myself throughout the years. And like there's a lot of my story in, in between there, but that what started my like filmmaking journey was just getting a camcorder and just going for it yeah so yeah i That's love that so cool. and I, I love how so many people have not the same story but a lot of very similar stories mm -hmm. of like the passion of the first time you picking up a camera mm -hmm. but so interesting how um youtube changed our lives like yeah. that was the first ever thing that i was like whoa like anybody can now do something mm -hmm. without how how it is right now you know like everybody can still do something right now but back then it was like if you were crazy you will go and yeah. upload a video yeah. doing whatever thing and no yeah, one really cared but you're yeah. now in the flow of like youtube be, be, because before then it was like either you know you're a kid and then a director the guy with a huge crew of like 200 people with a huge film camera now it's like it's there's a lot more layers into you you know a lot more steps Yeah. visibly that you can do i literally i saw a story this guy posted a short film on his uh on his on his youtube he put it on a bunch of film festivals a lot of them rejected he put it on his on his uh youtube granted a couple of the actors were influencers he got called by a director a week later and he's like hey i'm hiring you we're making this story a feature this happened like a couple months ago see pose so, yourself guys <laughs> i always say that just even if it's Silly little thing that you like overthink people won't yeah. like. Yeah. You should put it out there because you never know. Like, this is it. the fact that I always be like, you don't have to overthink it. It yeah. doesn't hit whatever. Yeah. Like, there's so many other videos mm -hmm. out there. Now, did yours hit? Did you ever make it big into that or did, was it just a, something fun? <sighs> no, it was just something fun. He, my, my buddy, he tried to start his own like superhero training that did like martial arts and parkour. And he started getting like a few thousand followers on his end. I, I didn't, he was just doing, I was just helping him with it. But yeah, it was just for fun. That really. sounds good yeah. though. That sounds cool. <laughs> right. what I mean, at the time. That sounds like something I would watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I have, a, I have a question for you on that like same timeline. From that into like getting more professional about yeah. it. Did you go to school for it? Did you just learn it on your own? As someone that always liked Disney and like I'm the same yeah. way. I've always loved Disney. Did you ever think of like, following a certain career path to like work there or how did that go? Yeah, so I actually worked at Disney for a few years, but I was just like food and beverage and merchandise. Actually, side note, met my wife working at Disney, so whole fairy tale, fairy tale story there. But um, after being in the company and I had an interview over at Imagineering and after talking with some people, I don't know, for, my, for what I saw, unfortunately, there was a lot of like, It was a really hard ladder to climb and not that I wasn't willing to do hard things. It's just that I don't know if that was the path that was worth my time. I saw a lot of like you had a you had to kiss up to a lot of people really to get mm -hmm. to certain areas that you wanted to in the company. And I know I know a lot of people who are who work at the company and are great and amazing. And I still appreciate Imagineering. It was just not the right path for my story. Mm -hmm. And so I left Disney and that's once I left Disney. I didn't do any formal schooling. I just continued with watching tutorials, messing around with cameras, getting gears, uh, getting gear and like GoPros and stuff and just experimenting and teaching myself and learning from other people who, who, who are out there just doing it. Um, and then my wife and I, we actually moved to Australia and we lived there for two years. Ooh, yeah, yeah, so that was that was an amazing experience. We went out good. there. I, I, know, yeah. I now was, know why he amazing. looks like that. He, goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he came, back, so he came cool. back Australian. That's right, far out, Mike. Came back <laughs> yeah. That's, That's so, so cool. cool. But, yeah, so we were out there for two years, and I, I had went out there. I went to a, a leadership college um, to study pastoral ministry, biblical studies, and at the same time, there was like a TV and film element to it that I got to get some like hands-on experience. And so, like at that point. I already kind of taught myself film, but th those moments with some people who were in the industry, they helped sharpen me a little bit. And then uh, once I graduated from that school, we moved back to the States. My, my wife got pregnant with our first daughter, brought us back to Florida, um, and then I got plugged into my local church. 
where I got hired as a, the video producer there. I need to ask you how old are you? Yeah. I'm 30, going to be 31, it's 32 It's still pretty this month. freaking impressive story yeah. already. Yeah. 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 So so I, story, you speed yeah. through time, I'm like, man. I'm like looking so at this much. and I'm, I'm like, like, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to like do all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a long time. I don't have enough time. I'm like, hold on. No, yeah. I love that. Definitely, I'm grateful and blessed for like just in my early 30s and I've I've lived a lot of life for a short amount mm-hmm. of time. Um, and my wife and I, we've coming on 11 years of being married, coming amazing. on our third kid already. So it's like, it's, it's amazing. That's beautiful. It's, man. it's amazing. So I'm, and I'm now I'm my own, my own LLC, my own company, kind of like, you know, we yeah. all do and doing what I love and getting paid for it. And no one's my boss. So it's beautiful. like the best experience. Living, the, living the dream. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. Well, I don't, I... I know we got to go into other subjects, yeah. but you already mentioned your wife and how you guys, I want to hear more about how you guys met. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we met at Disney working together and uh, she was in the college program from Michigan and I was just a part timer and we worked together a lot and we started, you know, liking one another and we decided to date and then her program ended. So she had to go back to Michigan to finish college. And uh, it's funny because at that point I was going to end the relationship. Because I've always heard like long distance doesn't work. And like we talked about it and she's like, no, let's at least try it. And I was hesitant and we decided to just try it out. And so we went a year of long distance. And what was cool is that, like I mentioned, my dad, he worked for American Airlines. And so I was able to fly up there a few times. I was able to fly her down a few times. And then other than that, like all we had was communication. And like, you know, people say the foundation to a relationship is good communication even in business that applies. And so like we had uh, Skype when Skype came out. So we were just talking and, and learning and growing from one another. And so we did that for a year. And then she moved down, we got engaged. And by the time we got engaged, we were like, we knew each other so well because of all the communication that happened yeah. during that long distance time that we were just in a solid foundational place. We I love that. That's beautiful. We got married and then our, our Australia story happened and here we are. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. flew to, to magic land, yeah. to paradise. Yeah. <laughs> to the, t- the other side of the world. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing story, especially like when, when you said you're 30 and that was 11 years ago. So it was, probably was, you, you were 19 when you guys got married? 20. My math 20. might be off. Yeah, I was 20 when I got married. No, his 22. math is off. Your math is right. <laughs> <laughs> one minus 11 is 19. Oh, I, you're 31. Yeah. My my values are wrong. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah. you excel in in race the uh, risk taker uh, and all yeah. all type of. Uh, I I kind of want to touch on you were saying yeah. on the communication. How how did that transfer? Can you give us like a quick little rundown on when you started your business and has you you know you've got married when you were twenty, so that's that's pretty early for a lot of people yeah, in our sure. generation. How how is that commitment and communication, uh, or val you know those values you've gotten from your wife? How does that transfer over to you running your business? Do you run it the same way? Do you run it the complete opposite? Yeah. So like obviously, there's a lot of differences differences between a marriage and a business, but there's also some similarities. Mm-hmm. And talking about that communication piece, it's so important. And even though I'm like I'm a I'm the sole owner of my business, I don't have employees yet, but I work with people, and we all work with clients. And so communication. Having good communicate because we all communicate, but having good communication is what sets you apart. Because a client doesn't want to deal with a bunch of crap. Like they yeah. want to get to the straight to the point. They want to know you're professional. They want to know that you could deliver what they need on time, and they want to have a good experience working with you. Mm-hmm. And so, kind of same thing in marriage. Like if your your spouse doesn't want someone who's going to be coming in and out doing whatever they want without communicating what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are our goals? What 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 are we trying to accomplish in life? Where are we going? What 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 are we trying to achieve as a couple? So like that's some things that like from a marriage to a business kind of are interlinked. Yeah. Um, and it's so important, like especially like even on set, being on a set and having good communication and knowing when to have fun, but also when to be serious and get to work, mm-hmm. and how to give clear direction will make a shoot, a production, a project go like much smoother yeah. and it creates a better, better working culture and environment. Yeah. Like we were just on a shoot recently and even though it was a funny shoot and not much happened on the shoot, like we had a great time. Like yeah. there was, we were talking, we were learning about each other. Like it wasn't all business. Yeah. And I can't be on a set and be just all, all business, business because yeah. what I see when I first walk on a set is the people. Mm-hmm. I see the person, I see you, I see you, I see you. How are you doing first? 
let's take care of the humanity portion of it and then yeah. let's get to work you know that's that. huge and we talk about that a lot we have like whole episodes where we're focused on you know how a lot of it is like the final product and what you're delivering to your client but also like what did you go through to get to that right and how good that experience was and like we met pretty much on set all of us mm -hmm. i mean everyone in this room including yourself but like us too and we've known each other for years and it's always such a great experience for us to work together so i think half yeah. of it is really the experience you have on set and, and what so. we said too it's like the client receives that oh for uh, sure. we, the, one of the biggest comments we always get when we work together is like oh you had such a great time we never argue on set mm -hmm. there's a lot of disagreements on set but we yeah. don't make it seen that we're arguing on set yeah. the, the client's seeing the value of what's going on yeah and then we're we're you know when we're doing the whole production side, yeah, you know, we we tell them what's going to happen. We do the the pre-production meetings when they're on set. We show them the process, yeah. and then they get the result. So the process itself is important. You can't yeah. just give yeah. them the final result. You can't just not communicate. Be like, cool, give me five grand. Yeah, go yeah. ghost mode and come back in two That's months with a exactly. with exactly. the best video ever. Yeah. Yeah. but those two months they're going to be stressing. Yeah. they're not they're not going to be having For a good sure. time. And like, right. and I love what you just said there about. You know, even though there's disagreements or something might go sideways and has to be navigated, it's like, what is a healthy conflict management? Mm -hmm. And then we could tie that back into the marriage question. Like conflict management, I've always told this because I come from a pastoral background. So I've, I've given people advice on this. Like in a marriage, when there's a conflict between a husband and a wife, some people tend to see the other person as a problem. So I'm pointing the finger at you. You're pointing the finger at me. I'm like, that's the wrong perspective. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in a marriage, you have to remove the problem and you place it out there in front of you. Mm -hmm. So we're not pointing at one another. Yeah. We're together looking at that's the problem. How do we fix that? I love that. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing on set, like you said, it's like yeah. you're not in there to argue. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, something might have gone wrong or we don't have the right key or somebody dropped the ball on something. Mm -hmm. I'm not angry. I might be frustrated, but I'm not necessarily making you the enemy. I can't. Yeah. If I want a healthy work environment, I can't do that. You're not the enemy. You're just like, okay, there's an issue. How do we yeah. solve that issue to move us forward? Yeah, because yeah. it's a team effort. Like, yeah, cool. It doesn't matter if you're the director, or producer, but like, you need yeah. all these people to be, you know, on your team yeah. throughout the whole process. Yeah. If you start making everyone angry halfway through, then butting heads, everything people don't want success. I love that idea though of placing it outside and like working on it together is beautiful, and it definitely applies to both like personal and business as well. Exactly. Well, that makes. I want a question from you. <laughs> no, that makes it very uh, good from you as, you know, a leader. Uh, I could notice how you really planned for it. We had the meetings. We were all and communication throughout it. Even the little chat right there. Yeah. I think that makes you, uh, sets you apart. I feel like when we work all together, whether it's an Emma film, Hazel Nude, Steady, mm -hmm. Inspire, like we have to step on the leadership and kind of manage that because mm -hmm. that's our role. You know, yeah. if we got the gig, yeah. we have to face it. Uh, but I think the way you manage people around, you know, like sometimes you're super busy, but you still know exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. Sometimes you're like easier, so we get to know each other and have fun. And, and as we say, like you pick your, your players and that's the best part of it. Because yeah. like, you know that regardless, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. and uh, going back to the experience, um, you know, making things um, nice for your client, even if they're in the industry or not, if they're first time in front of the camera, I think just for us holding the, the slate and being, you know, like so professional, take one, even though yeah. it was only one take, <laughs> yeah. I'll one be there. Camera, <laughs> one audio source straight yeah. into the camera, just clap it anyway. Just, and everybody was like, like, like oh. Hundred dollar boom pole yeah. <laughs> coming from the from but the camera. Listen, those like sometimes, yeah, yeah, it does, and, and all yeah. those little customer experience in our industry, mm -hmm. uh, like makes you more like reachable, more legit uh, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Because not everyone comes from like, oh, I'm a model or I'm a talent, and I know exactly yeah. you know how to be uh, on camera. Some people are like brand new, and I think it's an, an amazing experience. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. when I go out and shoot photo shoot, first time ever, people start getting loose, and then they start loving it. At the end of the day, they're like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is so cool, you know? like So like going through that also, it's like you have to be a good leader and 
know how to handle your people. So that's yeah. cool. So we're pretty much done. Would you want to shout out your, your social media where people can find you? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, and I appreciate you guys having me on this podcast. It's cool hanging out with all yeah. of you guys. I hope, you know, there's little nuggets of wisdom in there. Um, but you can follow me on social media on Instagram at inspiredfilms.co. That's a .co. And the website's the same. So you can check out some of my work. If you have any questions, you can reach out. I got gear rentals, dun, dun, dun. Um, okay. inspiredfilms.co. But yeah, really grateful to be here. Thanks for your time. Right, check them out, guys. Bye.